All right, we're gonna be going over class number 16. And uh, with this, we're gonna see uh, a, a nice little throw. Uh, one of my favorites in, in judo is Osotogari. It's just a throw with the leg, okay? And um, we're also taking another look at back control, okay? So that is a real keynote theme throughout the whole course is that, you know, taking someone's back is really uh, one of the ultimate offensive moves you can do. And we do it from defensive positions, we do it from takedowns, uh, we do it whenever and wherever we can. It is harder to fight backwards, it's not impossible. And then we also cover that as well. We're gonna get into some defense in the back in the class right after this, okay? So this will be kind of attacking the back and taking the back themed, uh, controlling the back, and then also uh, we're gonna be looking in the defense from standing rear neck grab or standing rear chokes, okay? So we kind of saw the same set of themes in classes four through six. We're just gonna expound upon that. So since we've got some throws coming up, not only this class, it is, you know, a very uh, gentle version of this throw really, but um, we'll be getting into the shoulder throw next class. But we're gonna start building towards that today. So we'll do some break falls, just because it's always good to slap the mat if we're gonna do throws. And we'll also start building for that shoulder throw just kind of off of our base against the rear grab. We won't throw with it until the next class, but today we'll start introducing a lot of what we've seen is this, figure, uh, this four point base. Today, in, in, in the next three classes, we're gonna get into more of a square stance, defensive posture. And when I see um, this base applied, it looks like um, a primate, mm -hmm. right? It, I mean, if you look at some of the, if you look at the mobility from that base without a partner, it looks it looks very, very primate and how you're how you're moving, how your back is shaped. So we're going to gain some mobility and understanding of that and how it works against um, an attacker. Okay, so let's start off with this. Just walking side falls going down the mat. <clears throat> Nice, and then, yeah, good. Stand up, good, yeah, good. Do three going down, and then do three coming back with the other leg. Very good. Now, um, same thing, we're going to do back falls. Let's just do two going down and two coming back. Back falls with a technical lift. And we're gonna do a bonus. I'm thinking about this a lot. And um, it's just another, It's you know, I, I talk with a lot of the in instructors here about disguising repetition, like people that teach their own class, because it's like, hey, we just, you know, we have to do this technique and, and um, it, you know, there's certain entries, things what we're doing here, but like, like break falls, we can really mix that up. Like we're not doing that for throws. Um, and this is an old school drill I learned from, um, my judo instructor, Mr. Dean, and it helps this idea of the square stance, but also the side fall, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk up to me and grab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab and connect, and you're gonna throw yourself. <laughs> and I'm gonna drop <laughs> if you do the side fall. Correct. Okay. okay. Start start with it just being like what how you were doing it a second ago with the side fall. Okay. okay. And then what we'll do is um, we'll add you jumping into the air. Okay. Okay. So just walk up and grab my lapel and side fall. Ah, you feel? Okay. So actually, when you get start getting that jump, it's a little better. Okay. Walk up, grab my lapel. Good. Okay, now 
Um, let's get a little air on it. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just kind of, boom, all right? Yeah, it's just, just let that other foot come off the board when it does. I'm gonna connect and drop with you, and it just it, it kind of adds a little uh, a little little pop to it. Okay, so come here. Yes, very good. So you see that helps me find my base from a square stance as well, because you're not making me bend over like this. Okay, so it's good for just a, a disguise repetition on the side fall. Right, do one more. Yeah, that was a good one. Right? And it helps me kind of, I mean, think from the very first class. There are throws and takedowns that we do, and the person's kind of got us in a headlock when we do it. And, you know, we have to maintain our base as we go down to that position, right? Like the mount in class one, leg foot takedown. You, you are holding my head, and I gotta not get pulled down and lose my posture. I gotta come down with base and posture. So you'll see, we all the time say finding and maintaining base, but that's a, a great way to kind of find and maintain base uh, as well for the person that acts as a post. So what we, we would do with this in class, so we'd be aligning people and you would get a post. And then I grab the lapel, I do the fall. Then, so boom, all right, everybody went through, next person's a post, here, here. And you're just grabbing and basing, grabbing and basing. So, Anyway, we'll see it. Uh, we'll see it in a, a class coming to uh, coming to you very soon. You know, in the gym near you here at the gym. All right. So, um, but that's just a, a you know a cool way to illustrate that. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, move on to some some movements on the ground. Okay. So let's just see you get in your all fours base real quick. Okay. Nice. Feet a little closer together. Not, yeah, yeah, there you go. Good. Nice. Okay. Now, without moving up and down the mat, let's just see some sit throughs from here. The stationary sit throughs. Mm, but side to side. Right? Keep the movement perpetual. Movement perpetual. We'll plant that foot and sit back through the other side. Right, so watch this side up here. Yes. But but don't turn directions, right? So watch here. So we're just stationary with this. Sometimes we, we do a box with it. Sometimes we do it going forward, right? There's nothing wrong with any of that. Again, disguising repetitions. And, and two, all of that has application for the techniques, okay? So here, here, so see I just stay here on this line. All right, so here, I'll do the same way I was facing. <coughs> yeah, put that foot down, yes. Slide those hips through. Uh-huh, there you go. That's great mobility. Okay, time. Very good. Okay. So that's just some good, you know, exercises for things we're going to be working on. All right. Um, now let's start getting into base. We need to be able to understand more a natural posture, a defensive posture. Right, and then sometimes we may even be a little wider than this. We definitely, as we saw in some of the previous side headlock defense, address a wide attacker like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> let's um, let's work on this. Let's face this direction. So look how when we're standing normal, natural posture, my hands are just like touching my my thighs. If I swung them side to side, they hit my my belt knot and my thighs. But if we drop into, into this base here, right? Our, our little curvature here and our, our hips are back, right? It's almost like, almost like the very first thing you do, somebody's coaching you to do a squat correctly. They say, hey, 
hips back first, don't not bend your knees first. All right, so a lot of people when they go to do a squat, they bend their knees first. I don't even know if I did, so I'm not programmed. Right. And that doesn't mean, or, you know, there's some squats where you do it differently, for sure. All right, like narrow squats, wide squats, zercher squats, there's all these different squat variations you can do, all right? But, you know, for the most part, the, the main coaching tip is hips back first, all right? So it is kind of it is kind of like that when I drop here, I am in that, that sort of posture, a little, a little less slow. Yes, and then look at your hands. Yes, all right. Now what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to move from here, right? If we're defending chokes, we need to be able to move in all directions. With our hands up. This way now, forward. Right, and again, it looks real, real primate when you see people do it, which is a, an interesting point. So the ability to just drop into our base with a square stance, like any time that you've done this, that's dropping into base with our staggered stance, our four point base. So neutral, staggered four point, and I'm defensive any time I bend my knees in this way. Okay, and then square, right? And our, and our back just needs, needs to be relaxed. Again, a good base, the mobile base, okay? So let's look at the first application on this. It would be against here. Yeah, you just got real heavy. Stand natural. Okay, get back in your defensive posture. Yes. Now, relax. Go ahead and go natural again. If I'm here, go ahead and just grab my hand, both of yours, right? Now this it is, you know, contextual for how I'm grabbing you, right? So here, here, you know, this is a, a two on one. If I had a seat belt, you know, on the ground, we might do something different. If I had gi grips, lapels, we might do something a little different. But here, I've got, you know, here, hand here, or hands together, but not, you know, like a, a arm triangle for our, our rear naked choke. So you're here. So feel yourself, like I, I wanna do this, right? Now, feel your hip go back first, so drop into that base. You feel how strong that is, right? And so it's the inclination is to kind of go forward Especially, like I said, we're building this class to the throw where I do throw you forward over my head. But first, you have to understand that our base is actually going backwards if we want to off balance things. Okay? So, here, you know, there, just go ahead and get the two on one. Here and here. Good. Elbows are tight. So that's, that's good. Now, um, you know, we're, we're friends or whatever. So now I start adding some, some aggression to it. Go ahead and drop into your base. Good. Go ahead and come back. Let me feel, not, uh, not a ton, but let me feel your hip come down diagonal back as you do everything the same way you just did. Go. Ah, that's much better. Okay. Now, if I persist here, this would be, just be like adding the strength. If I persist, I want you to walk backwards. And as you walk backwards, it's like you're sitting down um, onto a, a couch, onto a, a chair. You know, like when you do that, you're just like, oh, it's there. Unless your friend pulled it out from under you, which I've done to people, okay? I'm not proud of it, but that's how I know what I'm talking about. All right, so walk backwards. Ah, yes. Right? So get behind me, and I know I'm taller than you. Here. So boom. Alright, now really pull. See, when you pulled, you came off. I didn't even do anything. Right? Try and like drag me backwards. Okay, now a tip. We used to um, do this in judo all the time for any pickups, shoulder throws, hip throws, things we learned in this class as well. Make your legs go rigid like this. 
when getting picked up, okay? So this is something that will help. That way you don't accidentally fall off. And um, it, it really just almost adds a layer of it for me as well if I'm the one, you know, picking you up and you go rigid. So um, feel this. Right, I'm just gonna go here. Make your legs go rigid and straight. Oh. All right. Turn the in the back. And oh. yeah. There you go. Thanks. All right. This yeah. Kind of posturing as I was doing that to you really is what what the idea is. It can be heavy wall like come off the ground. In a sense, yeah. right? And you know what 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 will happen? And you, know, you still actually, you can still fall off when we do this. Mm -hmm. But it's just like I said. You know, when we're teaching people these things. Like think it's your you just signed up and it's your first class, but it's actually class six. <laughs> yeah. Which is fine because you know we move through all this stuff in just a few months time. It's a few times a year. So, you know, it's like, okay, well that person coming in, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna need some some repetition on just like, hey, well just do the pickup, it's your first class. You know, and then next time they come through, it won't be the first time they've seen it, they can kind of understand all phases of it. Today, again, this is really trying to understand more about base when someone's behind us, right? And we've seen that in some of the earlier classes, four through six. But here's the thing. Look at all the ways that someone could be behind you. Here, 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 right? You got the double over, you got the double under. We talked about that a second ago. Just go defensive posture, drop. Yes, you're very heavy. I don't like that. Okay? Even here. Okay? These are all ways I may grab you. Right? And we saw, and, and you excelled in previous classes, playing the rear clinch. So, what about when somebody's behind us and they're not just trying, a bouncer and a bar trying to choke us because they got the wrong guy? Right? Like, which, you know, has happened to people I know. So, it's just, you know, a, a good getting out of a rear naked choke. You know, I've seen people that know nothing about martial arts and never taken a class and can choke somebody unconscious. It's pretty instinctual to grab somebody's head and squeeze, and then they, you know, so you, you do it hard enough for long enough, they'll go out. So that's, um, you know, we're just developing and furthering our understanding of this rear clinch idea. So if I'm here, connect your hip, yes. Okay, now if I really start bearing down, I want you to walk backwards. Ah, yes. And did you feel my legs feel a little more rigid? Probably felt different than the other times. Because other times it kind of allows me to come out like this. Which can make a counter for either one of us if we're getting more intermediate to advance with it, which we're, we're not in, in this set. Okay, so good, good um, on that. And um, we'll kind of look at that for the, is it in the, uh, context of the takedown here in a few minutes, okay? But that's just the idea of, you know, we um, we need to understand our base when somebody's from behind us, and then it has several applications and context. And as we go through the whole course, you all of those grabs I just mentioned, you'll learn something to deal with all of them, okay? So now, let's get into um, the big uh, block here over the next few classes also on getting into um, defending against kicks. Okay, now we saw in a, a previous class, if I'm like doing a front kick to the groin, I don't do any reaction. Boom, let me kick you in the groin, sir, don't react, right? But, you know, when this is happening, we're just gonna do this from here, right? You're just gonna turn and close the door, right? So look how I, I pivot on the ball of my foot, just like when um, in boxing, when you throw a hook punch, you do, yes, good, okay? And it doesn't have to be super exaggerated. What it has to do is close this line that, that goes straight up to my spine, okay? So if you go here, here, that defends either side front kick, okay? So I'm gonna go this side front kick, and this is review, we've seen this previously. You go there, yes. Now, um, shin is what we're hitting, like in, if I hit your shin with my foot, it does not feel good. Shoes, no shoes, it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, I go this side now, boom. I go this side now, there you go. I don't even wanna do it, okay? Like it's, you know, we do this with the, we had the prop last time with the padded stick. 
So another thing we saw last time is I'm pushing you, go push the fence. Yes, a little forward lean into me, yes. Okay, now here, if I start trying to front kick, yes. If I started trying to knee, which this will be a future class, keep your connection with your elbows. Yes, if I start trying to knee, just steer one of the elbows up. It doesn't matter which one. I won't be able to get to you, right? So that's what we saw on the front kick defense. It's same word, same in Thai boxing with the Thai points, just for your own knowledge, okay? Now, what about the front kick to the body? So we've talked a lot about here. We've talked some about just like right here. We talked uh, about just like, oh my, you know, my stance is neutral, my hands are up, like, yeah, yes, can I, can I help you, is there a problem here? And now my face is kind of protected, it's kind of like our, our, our more defensive guard, we may put the triangle with our hands. Okay, but sometimes this might be what, uh, all we've had time to do before the engagement happens, right? So we want as many, like, uh, I'm totally caught off by surprise, maybe they didn't even approach from the front. Here, I saw you approaching last second, but I didn't get to step back or get my hands all the way up. At least if you're here, your hands are on the inside position, okay? So, um, you know, we can work from here. This is once, uh, needs to be one of our anchor points for just guard for self-defense, okay? So if your hands are here and somebody throws a front kick to the body, right? We'll see later about like making a miss by stepping it back. Right, so if you do a front kick, do a front kick to me. I thought I was in distance, huh? And all I did was step back. That's all I have to do, okay? But this class, we're gonna deflect it, okay? So go ahead and just give me one, I'm not gonna do anything. Good, you had the distance, you could have done that. That would have sucked, right? Especially if you would have extended your hip line. Go ahead and do it again. Right, one more time, same side. See, I just go here. Now, that's, that's just the action of my, my hand deflecting. Now I wanna add that same action as when we were post and defending against the, uh, with the shin block against the groin strike. So go same side kick again. See that added a little more dynamic to it, right? And we'll see other, go ahead, same side kick again. Here, I can come in and attack with takedowns, clinches, strikes. We'll see some other things off of this. Because the front kick defense throughout the whole program has a, a nice little list of things, okay? So um, here, all we wanna do is deflect and turn. Deflect and turn, okay? So here's the thing. Kick distance is further out than punch distance. That's another thing to understand. And as we go through all our kick defenses, oh, okay. Yeah, so here you got a different set of problems. Here you gotta need a different set of problems. You know, knees, elbows, headbutts, punches. Some of those other things I mentioned too, and some kicks. Here, you don't have to worry as much about a headbutt or, or an elbow. I've got, you know, so you, you develop this depth perception for self-defense, okay? So you're here, just you. Hands are nice and, nice and relaxed and just like when we're we're Italian hands up here, yeah, we're just, we're just here. Hey, yeah, what's up, buddy? Yeah, yeah, no need for me to be um, openly, uh, visibly thinking about killing you. Can I help you type of an attitude, okay? But when this front kick comes, I'm gonna go this side and we'll, we'll alternate sides. You're just gonna parry, deflect with that hand. Boom, just forearm, just good, just boom. Yeah, okay, and even if your hands were here, and we'll do that in a second. So what you've seen in some of our, like our, our Muay Thai and kickboxing classes, give me a front kick. That's what we teach in there a lot, okay? This, for self-defense, a little different, different goals in mind than sport Muay Thai, right? Because the things I teach in there, I talk about them, are for the sport, okay? So here, when you kick, right, right there, okay? So it's just a, go ahead, same thing. Just a deflection, just a deflection. Okay, so it's like a, a hand period. And then when I do it from here, kick that same leg again. All right, just, whoop, whoop. Okay, so hands are low. Good. More the same leg again. Okay. Good, we're gonna do three in a row now. And this, this two. 
right? Like this is so non-threatening, but if you know, well, if you know jujitsu, if you know these things that we are in here doing together every day, it's threatening, right? To me, I'm just like, dude, I'm about, in my, in my mind, I'm like, I'm about to ruin this person, right? Like, like if I had to throw this up, like, hey, what's up? I'm thinking about bad things, mm -hmm. right? Things that, that we don't want to deal with, right? And that's why we do this. So we can stay calm. So they, like, oh man, this is like I'm thinking about having to totally react to the situation with as much force as I need to, uh, you know, to do to defend myself. And I'm not going to show that to this person, right? It's almost like a really good poker fight. I'm not going to show you my hand. I'm not going to. Yeah, you got a bluff, right? And I don't know jujitsu, sir. Can, can, what's up? Can I help you? Right? Like I don't spend I don't spend all day every day thinking about. Um, how to defend myself and, and, and hurt people if I have to in the process. Because right. that's what self-defense is, man. You know, we, we had this aversion to come into the sport training to like, oh yeah, I don't want to hurt Micah. Like, but at the same time, I don't want Micah to get hurt, right, out there. Right. So it's like, you got to just balance those lines. That's why this is a great course. Because um, it, it, it really brings that side in, whereas our, our other gen pop classes don't as much, okay? So I'm going this side, you're just here. There you go. I'm gonna go this one a couple of times in a row. Yeah, 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 Italian hands, okay? Yes, you're getting it down. Now go here. So now we're still neutral stance. And uh, what this is gonna be is a scoop. The same side, scoop, scoop, okay? Boom, I want you to go out here with it, all right? Just a small little scoop here, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. That was a really good one. Stay where you are. I'm gonna go leg, leg, body, body, okay? Oh, oh, I know you mean. Uh, yeah, I should have said groin, groin. Got you. All right. But I'm, I'm kicking at the lower level, right? So um, block with your shin. Boom. Boom. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, um, lastly here, just let's do this from here. Yes. Good. Okay. Now, remember, a good base is a mobile base. That doesn't just mean our, our feet move. When I'm talking about like, it's, it's like, it's like a primate, mm -hmm. right? Like think about, um, I was watching the, the uh, X-Men Origins movie, right? Like Beast has the, the hands for feet in the beginning of that, mm -hmm. right? So, but think about how much primates use all fours, mm -hmm. right? So here, right, good, so. We need to be able to use our hands. Okay, go that same side. Boom. Like we use our feet with our base. We don't, and, and you know, those steps we do, and the ones we did, they're small. It's inching. When I teach it, I say that. I'm inch your way, inch your way down, inch your way forward. Okay? So um, it's not exaggerated unless we have to close a lot of distance. Right? And we're still, you know, we're just talking a, a, a twice as big step as we would normally do. There are two, two steps to achieving, right? Like uh, with some of the club defense that we teach. So um, good job on the front kick defense. That's, that's important. Uh, just so on the standing base, you know, somebody's from, from behind you, you need to be able to find that base. Sometimes it's dropping way down, hips more back, all right? It, it depends on the context of how they're driving, okay? So um, what we'll do next is, um, We'll be seeing uh, how to use some of that same stuff. Okay, so this is the leg throw. In judo, this is osoto atoshi, the way we would finish it. That just means I don't do a crazy, this leg throw could be boom, right? And we'll see some different leg actions on, on this throw in other classes, but, but this one, essentially, it's just here. Nothing crazy. It could be really fast and really crazy, right? Right. You get like uh, McMillan who teaches here. He's a fourth degree judo black belt. He does this. You'll hit the ceiling, right? It's one of his throws. Okay. So, but this 
for self-defense, because they're, they're being the attacker and aggressing, um, it, you throw this um, effortlessly and with no leg action required on this variation, okay? So um, this is gonna be against the rear grab, okay? So here. Now, the, the first thing we need to do anytime we get grabbed is form a little bit of a base, okay? Now remember the, the, our mantra, a good base is a mobile base. So it can't be just like the, the, against the pickup, like root yourself to the ground, right? For, for this particular one. Now, if I, you'll feel when that's the application, right? Over time, once we've seen all these, like, okay, yeah, they're about to pick me up and dump me, mm -hmm. right? So here, get a good base, good connection here. Now, the idea of what we're looking for is for you to hook me uh, around my foot that's behind you with your right foot. Okay, so uh, your right foot's gonna hook my foot real quick. Go ahead and do that, nice. All right, just like, and it hooks behind my calf. Okay, like, without even grabbing me at first. Because you can do this to, to help with the pickup, right? But I'm just hooking right behind there, trying to fix the camera. All right, put this foot forward. Cool. Just like that, okay? So, it, again, we'll see this later as a pickup defense. Okay, so just like right behind the calf and ankle, right? So here, so hook, yes. All right, now, see, um, uh, I want you to, uh, like where your weight's at, feel where your weight's at, I want you to shift it all to this side and then step around, boom, good, okay? Now, as you do that, you're going to pull and then kind of turn and bow, okay. right? Almost like on hip throws and shoulder throws, we do that same action to make somebody fall off our back. So as I transfer this weight, go ahead and, and get around my neck here. Yes, so I'm defending here. As I transfer this weight here, and then, hey, we're gonna side fall drill we did earlier. That's it, right? So on so many of the judo throws that we learn, right, or throws in general, we see that we don't want to lose our base. So like right there, just look quite literally boom, what we did in the warm up. Okay, so turn this direction. I grab this base, good. Just good, good posture from the source head. It doesn't have to be down super heavy, like not down as much to pick, pick up a little bit more hip connected, yes. Okay, so I feel this and I start to, uh, start to, um, you know, I'm, let's say I'm your friend on this variation, we're still learning. But I'll start pulling you back when I feel that you've done a good job like this. I will aggress more, and that's the next version. But hook the foot, transfer your weight, and pull down. Oh, yeah, nice. That's what's up. Totally lost my balance. You had it on that one. Let's do it again. What this was so cool is when you had it, you probably felt like you did nothing. Right. When I do this, like the person that's receiving the throw and me both, and we're just like, whoa. Right? So. Here. Good. Put the leg. Nice. Both of my feet came off the floor. So, and that's, again, you know, usually you gotta boom to make that happen. So, really cool. Now, and this is, let's start to just kind of get it with um, a little more aggression. I'm gonna start pulling you back, okay? But you're gonna be walking backward with me. Okay, so here base. So again, you know, mobile base, you gotta be able to walk. So I'm here, look, good, nice, very good. Let's start a little closer to here. Base. Ah, very good, very good. My man, find some self-defense in here. Good, good job. Way. It's, it's so simple, right? But I'm gonna tell you the first time I ever, like I, I knew this throw, the first time I trained at Hicks and Gracie, I got my judo bite belt the next weekend. I got back and did my judo bite belt testing. And it was a jiu-jitsu brown belt at that time. And I knew the throw was sort of great. I probably loaded it up thousands of times. I wanna, put, I wanna say 10,000, but at that time, I've been doing judo about seven years at that time. Definitely now. And I showed up to his seminar and he showed versions of this and many other throws from judo that I'd never considered and that you would only see coming from that well, you know? 
So it's really interesting and it's effortless and a great self-defense application. So somebody's dragging you backwards with that, that choke here, base, be able to move and turn, okay? So good work on the Osoto. Um, we'll uh, next be working on the ground with uh, some of our back control stuff, all right? Okay, so we're gonna go over taking the back setting our hooks but this is going to be from this position we've seen um, in previous classes a little bit all fours or turtle right and it, so micah you get down here and let's go on your knees and elbows so think just like we have different postures for our base from standing you know this is like if he's worried about me taking the back he's going to be um balling up right here okay so not giving me any space to get hooks around him Okay, so what we're gonna do when this is happening is I wanna put one of my legs behind him here. I'm gonna base my hand and I'm gonna insert a hook here, okay? And look, this is almost like when we get up and base or do sit-throughs also in terms of our like, mobility of what we're doing. When I pull him over to the side here, with turn, I throw that other hook in, okay? And now I'm here on the back. I've got my seatbelt grip, okay? so. I'm here beside him and I'm going to switch my base here I keep my hand on the mat and I insert my hook first then I pull him get the other hook with the seatbelt okay so get beside me whichever side you want to be on right so here like so you're gonna essentially kind of Put your chest a little more on my back and then bring your um your other knee yes good and then kind of put it behind my hip a little bit okay now put your hand here now put weight on this hand so you can just kind of sit through there yes okay and then with my hand on your hand on my hip pull me sideways there you go throw the other hook in good again See, I'm, I'm balled up here and tight. So you put that leg behind my hip, hand on the mat. Now just kind of carry your weight so you can use the, yeah, use like your foot like a spear. Yes, good. There you go. Okay, turtle down again. So here, like look how this is. So watch. All right, kind of, kind of coming in here. Point your toes as you come in, and then, hey, all right, do one more. You go. Very nice. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so just we've seen taking the back from mount. We've seen when somebody's in our guard and they have an arm under our head, or they're trying to saw our neck off with their forearm. We've seen it there. So taking the back again, <clears throat> as I said earlier, it's not something we're looking at back control. No, we're controlling the back this time, right? But here, you know, kind of, you're all balled up right there. I am kind of controlling your back. It's within that spectrum of back control when we look at turtle, okay? So good job on that. Let's do, uh, finish up with this. This is one of the lapel chokes that we learned. And the first one that we've, we've learned in this whole uh, course so far okay so you know gaining a, a basic understanding of uh of your lapel chokes is um is a goal for you to obtain um all throughout the card belts right so just getting the basics of leverage um gripping uh you know the kind of the idea of like what's happening when you are strangling someone um, what it's doing to them, understanding some of the defensive principles, that's just kind of your white through blue belt, okay? You're just getting the fundamentals, right? And if we're looking at the back, this is the most fundamental choke that we teach, okay? And I'm just gonna go over the gripping and then we'll set hooks and we'll go over some finishing details, okay? So it's single lapel grip across the throat, okay? So, you know, a lot of times when we work that, we open this up and we, feed it to that hand. So I pass that grip off and then I go across here. Okay. 
Now that second hand is actually, uh, it's paramount. It's very important, okay? But when I go here and I take that slack out, he, he feels the seriousness of that, okay? Now, either side, right? So look, if I'm gripping here, my head's here, right? And again, taking the slack out. So the ability to, from a seat belt to go here or to switch grips and go here, okay? A lot of times when you have the seat belt and you start trying to apply this, people be grabbing your hands, even, even brand new people, or untrained people, right? So when you start grabbing my hands, it's a cool drill to switch because that's, I mean, it's very realistic. Again, think if, if you didn't know any jujitsu, you're a brand new student starting this program and somebody got behind you and grabbed your neck, you'd be like, oh, I would just like tuck my chin and grab at their hands. You would, right? And hopefully they don't know a, a lot of jujitsu so you don't get choked because that's not a suitable enough answer. Let's turn a little bit, okay? So <clears throat> now here and here, Okay, so like I wanna kinda of curl forward and have this connection. Now, when it, in terms of the gripping, right? So like what I'm gonna do is I'm not clenching with my whole fist, right? What I'm doing is I want to turn it. I wanna turn my forearm, right? So like, think here, like that's, that's not getting, um, you know, it's getting more the flat part of my forearm on his neck. I want, right, these edges right, your, your radius and your ulnar, those, those are the, the sharper surfaces of your forearm and it sucks when you get them put on your throat in, in, in pretty much any capacity, right? But if I want this to be efficient, I need to think about how I'm gripping. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grip more with these fingers, okay? So here, when I wanna uh, take the slack out with this side, I'm here, like I'm turning by um, gripping with the ring and uh, pinky finger. Okay, so here, all right? Now, before I've ever done that, I took the slack out of the other lapel. So you're always gonna have, unless you take it out, a little slack here in the back of his lapel, okay? So here, all right, what I wanna do before I ever start choking is taking that slack out. Now, I'm, you know, we got serious quick, right? And I haven't even started um, turning really. Right? So here, what this allows me, like here, you'll be able to hold on for a while if I create a bunch of space, right? But think about this, like, I didn't even start doing anything yet. And there, I was doing essentially nothing with these, right? So people, they grip everything here. And, and it and it, uh, disables you from being able to get the full rotation you want with your arm. So you end up compensating by using more of your back muscles by creating space between your chest and body when it's like you really should stay tighter on this, right? Like I would, I would see world champion, um, like legend sport jujitsu people showing it this way in the past. And you'll tap eventually. There's also some great defenses to that. Okay, so <clears throat> set your hooks here. Okay, so um, open and feed the gi. Mm -hmm. Okay, now go across. Okay, now good. Take the slack out. Good. Now, just with those. Good. Now start pulling this and like rotating your body. Oh, that was so intense. Good job. That was nice. Nice for you, not for me. I was like my head was exploding. That was great. Um, so. And you didn't have to create, the, the, the error for this, and I used to do it this way for years, is creating space between your chest and back, right? Uh, so like my back and your chest. So when you do that, like a lot of times people would do this. Again, I would see world champions showing that, right? Well, you don't have to do it that way, all right? So go ahead and get it again, okay? Go here. This is the serious part. Take that slack out. Yes. Now, loosen up with these. Turn the arm. Oh, that's terrible. Now, almost like you're going to go for a bow and arrow when you turn to start moving your hips and body around me. Terrible. Good job. All right. It's serious business, folks. It sucks. 
But here's the thing, um, you know, we, we talk about this in a lot of ways, but the day you have to defend yourself <clears throat> for real, it's going to suck. And, you know, um, we do this so it sucks less. Uh, you know, it's funny because friends of mine that have, you know, been in more self-defense experiences than I have that are also black belts will even say like, oh man, I wasn't ready for that. Right. And these are like some of the best martial artists I know. And in every uh, unplanned altercation, they're like, man, I, I, you know, something happened I didn't expect, even though they're, you know, they were just untrained or aggressive. They could have been on drugs. But, you know, here's the thing. Every jujitsu match I ever had, unplanned things happened. Every fight I ever had in a, in a ring or a cage, unplanned things happened. Right. So, uh, you know, even sparring, even when we roll, like, so. You know, this one thing that um, is kind of the other side of this is, uh, you know, we're we're able to address when the unplanned things happen, and um, we have techniques for phases of timing, like, oh, this is early, middle, late. Like, I was real late on this, and I didn't get to get my hands up. So we have things that, uh, you know, over time, and I think this uh, was cool. Bruce Lee talked about this. We're, we're born with, everybody's born with a set of instincts, and they're not really martial arts instincts. Like you might have some inherent ideas, but when we start training martial arts, we start um, erasing those instincts that no longer apply, mm -hmm. right? And we start putting something that that suits us there. Like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this mm -hmm. instead of like before. I would have been like, oh, oh, yeah. I see people close their eyes when they punch and when they're about to get punched. <laughs> like the two times you need to keep them open, you know. So, but that's what he's talking. About. So any self-defense program, any martial art is going to do that for you on a long enough time. So, all right, dude, good work.